Hey, so I want to talk about uh, SQLite databases as we use them in Android. So there are a couple of quirks, some, some syntax, some concepts to be aware of when you use SQLite in Android. So first of all, there, there is a helper class to use uh, SQLite. We have a, a SQLite database, and there's even a SQLite database helper class. And it, it defines various um, functions that we use in order to access our SQLite uh, databases, including uh, exec SQL, which lets you um, execute sort of raw SQL queries, which we're, we're not going to do, but I want you to know about it. So uh, the, um, the database object in Android allows you to specify where the database is. It allows you to do operations on the database. And in this case, these are uh, sort of raw operations where you can just provide the, uh, the um, text for your SQL queries. Uh, but then there is also these more abstract delete, insert, replace, uh, replace and update. I don't know replace, update uh, operations, which correspond to your SQL operations. And we want to see sort of how to use them and how to use them safely. So the most important thing to, to realize about accessing a database is that there's the type system in your program, which is a set of objects and concepts that you think about as the program. And then there's sort of the type system of the database. And the type system of the database is simple. It's a little bit like JSON. It's got strings, it's got Booleans, it's got integers. So it doesn't know about complicated objects. It, it has foreign keys. That's about as, as complicated as it gets. It doesn't even have arrays, an array has to be a table. So translating between the type system of your program and the type system of the database is a little awkward. When people started doing this, they just constructed SQL queries using string manipulation. And when you're doing string manipulation, you sort of lose all the type information. You are just taking a particular, um, you know, you're, you're taking this, this string that says sort of select and it has sort of star in the string. And then you are doing string concatenation and you are providing um, or you're plugging in untrusted user input. And in the beginning, this was fine because this untrusted user input came from maybe employees uh, in your organization who were not malicious. However, once people started using databases in applications that had multiple users across the internet, we had to worry about malicious actors. And if you know what's going on in a database, you can provide a username that when plugged into this string does some bad things. So it contains some SQL code that when executed, in this case, you know, select star from users where name equals um, an empty name or one equals one. So the point of this select statement is to get you your user record. What we do you know, the way we fake it out is by giving a funny name for our username, we get everybody's record. This is a SQLite uh, injection attack, and this is very bad. So when these became known, uh, there was a, a little bit of a, a hullabaloo because there's, there's no way to prevent this from happening if you are uh, constructing your queries in this uh, naive way using string concatenation. So we just had to dump it. Okay? You should never ever do this in your uh, program because it's very, very difficult to figure out whether a given data source uh, is trusted or untrusted within, within your, your program. You might think that it's trusted and then 
the application evolves and at some point it becomes untrusted and then there's an attack that people can do against your program. So we are never going to put user provided input as part of a raw query. There is a way to get around this and it's called this content values. So this content values is, is an object. So we use this object for the, the values. And there's a particular format of the arguments you're, we're going to see. It's this sort of ugly equals question mark thing. So we're, we're going to say in the, the string, we're going to put this uh, equals question mark because that's a constant. We know how to do that and it's very easy. And where the system sees equals uh, question mark, it's going to use the values from the content values object. Okay, so what do I, what do I mean by this? So uh, instead of, uh, in this case, we're doing an insert. So instead of creating uh, 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 an insert statement that says, you know, the, the, that says sort of, you know, column one equals you know, thread. What we're going to do is we're going to create a constant values object. And then we are going to put the elements that we want to insert into that object. So here we have column name one, and we have value one. And this, this might be a Boolean, this might be an integer, this could be a string, but this is a, a variable, oops, a variable. Variable is not spelled with a W. Um, is a variable in our, in our program. And this can be type checked a little bit, and this can hold user generated uh, input. And then when we do our insert, instead of having this string that we created that has uh, uh, untrusted uh, user generated input, we have our table name, which is something we control, um, uh, null object for. Um, that's a, there are many um, arguments for, uh, for, for any insert. I think this is, this just says uh, we want the, the where is null. So uh, um, uh, yeah, you would actually specify what you wanted to match here. And then our, our, val our, our content values object. And so the content values object uh, has inside of it all of these information for all of the columns that we actually want to update. And we can use content values across all of our SQL operations. So we end up using it in insert, we end up using an update, we end up using it in replace. It's really nice. Once you sort of uh, get used to the content values, you're going to see it in, in every uh, database access. Um, so what, what, is it, what does it uh, look like in, in terms of uh, uh, the um, usage in, in query, which is a complicated one? So here we're, we're adding more uh, arguments. Uh, we've got our table name, which is a string. We have a set of columns uh, also, which is now an array of strings. So it's slightly more complicated than just a string. We have our selection, which uh, tells us what uh, columns we want. We have the selection arguments, which is also an array of strings. And the selection arguments if we know, uh, if we have a constant, we can just put that in our selection arguments. But if we want to uh, have a variable in our selection arguments, we put in this equals question mark. So this is a string that goes into this array. And this would be another string that goes into this array. So that's our selection arguments. Then we also have a group by, which lets you uh, say for uh, matching records, how should they be ordered? Um, string, uh, this is additional selection criteria, and order by, this is the ascending, descending. So once you have these selection arguments, uh, we're going to have a content values object, which actually has the type, which in this case is a string image, and the date. And so what gets a little confusing about this is the arguments and the values are in sort of two different places and they're expressed in two different ways. 
it's a little unfortunate, but sort of that that's that's you know where we are in terms of avoiding SQL light injection attacks. So the argument selector is this equals question mark, and then the values are in content value uh, objects. So we don't we don't this is what we want to avoid. We want to avoid writing everything out into a big uh, string where we put these untrusted variables, the contents of variables that hold untrusted data that came from a user source. We don't want to put that into a string. The content values give you uh, a nicer way of doing it. Um, okay. Okay. So we're going to see examples. The 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 con the. Uh, Concrete syntax we're going to see uh, when we go through our, our Kotlin uh, examples um, um, in our, our demo apps. Um, but the, the thing I want to talk about now is the result of, of queries. So a lot of times when we uh, query a, a database, we end up with a bunch of records. And you might think of it as sort of a large array. And then you might want, you know, what do we do with arrays? Well, in Android, we often put them into an adapter so that we can scroll through them uh, and see the, the parts of the array that we're interested in. And there's support in Android to take what we call a cursor, which is what we get back from a query, and to put that cursor uh, uh, as part of, uh, as, uh, send it to an adapter or to, grab a list of, of objects from it and put them all in memory if you know that the result of your query is going to be small. So the cursor object comes back. This is, in this case, a, a raw query. And so what we're doing, um, this, is, this is OK to have a raw query because there's no untrusted input. We wrote out this entire query. Uh, when you get a cursor back, the first thing you do is you have to move it to the beginning. And then you can go through the cursor sort of like it was an array. However, when we're accessing fields in the cursor, we do have to say thing, we have to, um, we have to identify uh, the, the cursor goes through the rows, and then we have to identify what column values we want. So the cursor is going row by row. And then the columns have to be identified by index, which is just a number. However, we conceptually want to think about the columns as named by a string. And so uh, there's going to be a call to get the column index from a particular string. And so you can see that there's, when we access stuff in a database, conceptually, it's not so complicated. But in terms of the syntax we have to sort of wade through, it's a little bit ugly. And, you know, like most of the time, the, the column name is going to be defined as a static string. And so it's not going to be something simple like ID. It's going to be something more complicated, you know, like um, note dot, you know, column you know, uh, ID. Um, and it just looks ugly. So that's, that's un unfortunate. It's just an unfortunate reality of the sort of impedance mis mismatch between the programming language and the database. You know, the programming language um, has a way of representing its data. And even though conceptually, this, this, whole, this whole thing, right, is just saying, get me the value of ID, and I know it's an integer. And yet, we have to sort of wade through a lot of syntax in order to get that meaning. Um, you know, this this next line says, "Hey, get me get me this column. It's a string." Um, and again, there's going to be a, a lot of uh, uh, syntax. And so, um, you'll see when we do our apps, we try to keep all of this syntax in sort of one file in one place. So that's the file where we're doing the, the sort of low level interaction with the database. And once we're done with that, we sort of create these objects that then the rest of our application, it looks like a regular application. It looks like a regular Android application. Oh, and that's it. 
So let's take a look at uh, some good examples now, shall we? Uh, 